Uh, hi, Kesha, and let's break down your animations. So let's start with the fire one. So uh, the overall motion is there. Uh, the form is there. I love the shape language that you've got. Quite nice, mostly clean edges. Uh, we just can work a little bit on the spacing and the slowdown of the fire. So when you start, the first frame is working well. We can polish this a bit in some areas. So we can smooth out this part. Yes, it's better. And smooth out some of the synth here because it feels a bit rough, especially in motion. But it's not the most important bit. The most important bit is having a nice, consistent motion and the slowdown. So we accelerated the start, but as you can see, the form doesn't go anywhere after that here. So it goes down and to the left, then it goes up. Then it slows down again and goes to the right. Then it goes and accelerates to the right and slows down again. So what, what we are missing here is a nice consistent slowdown. So generally in this animation this is a subtle but very simple acceleration and deceleration type of thing. So we accelerate at first, and then with each frame we slowly decelerate. So we go up to the left, decrease the spacing, decrease the spacing, decrease the spacing, decrease the spacing. And so we have slower. Oh, okay, so this is the fastest part. Then we go slower and slower and slower, almost the same, a bit slower, slower and slower. So with each frame we decrease the spacing. And if you look at other parts of the animation we notice roughly the same thing. So we go, start decelerating, start decelerating, start decelerating, decelerate, decelerate, decelerate. So you see, with each frame the spacing becomes smaller and smaller until it slows down or rotates. So that's the point, the overall structure of the spacing here. So if we look at, for example, the bottom of the fire, you can notice the same thing. So we kind of accelerate at the start and then we start slowing down. So we can slow down, slowing down here, and then it starts rotating. So for the bottom parts, as you can see, they have a slight delay, so they start slower, then they have some kind of acceleration, and then we decelerate. Again, we start slower, accelerate, and then we start decelerating. So again, slower, acceleration, deceleration with each frame. Next one, this part. So we go one, two, accelerate, and start decelerating again. So again, slow, faster, and decelerate again. And that works for every part of the frame of the animation and so on, of the fire. So the scene is here that we 
move to the right suddenly and then we go up and then the motion is nice overall but you see there is a sudden acceleration here so we were decelerating and then we suddenly accelerate quite a lot and instantly stop and then accelerate again and slow down so that's the problem here that it suddenly accelerates, slows down, accelerates again, slows down, accelerates. The same thing on the other side. So you see, it goes up, accelerates, starts slowing down, slows down quite a lot, but then it was moving in the opposite direction, so it changes direction and changes the direction again. Let's look at this one. So we go, go, slow down, then we accelerate a bit, slow down, and then you see this part, this part accelerates, and then instantly slows down. So that's the problem, because it was already slowing down, so you see it slows down, and then you suddenly accelerate it. So it slows down, accelerates. Again, let's start, we start slower, then we go to the right, then we suddenly go right up and stop going to the right, and then we stop and go again. So you see, slow down, suddenly accelerating, stopping accelerating. And right here, so we go up, go up, and then we suddenly go down. Go up, go up, suddenly stop going up, and then we go up again. So it's just about consistency and making sure that your spacing works well, that your form changes logically and that everything is fine, is fine. Right here, notice that the form changes, this thing goes down and this thing appears and then it disappears and this round shape goes up again. So next up we have this design. So uh, if we're talking about like fire bursting or something like that, it's better to keep your shapes more slick and straight in the beginning or to keep it more uh, a bit simpler or uh, and a bit focused at the beginning because the flame is just starting to burn or it starts bursting and then you can make the shot the form more wispy more like wavy as the fire slows down and starts moving way slower because when the form is being pushed by something, especially if it's being stretched out, uh, and generally if you want to show the initial stages of the flames, it's better to keep it more focused, so you can keep it more rounded, or you can keep it more straight, but just try not to make it too symmetrical. Uh, as for the fire, so this thing, uh, it looks quite nice, I like the color choices, I like uh, the overall shape language, we can improve it by making it less symmetrical and making it less even. Right now, you see these parts, all these parts are more or less the same in size, all the holes like this holes and this holes, so you see, they're almost parallel to each other, so these lines are almost parallel, parallel, and the holes itself, they are very similar in, in size, so this hole is very similar to this one, this one to this one, and this form, and this form, and this form, so it's almost like it's being mirrored, if you look like this, so it's like it was being mirrored, and then shift it down. And that makes the design less interesting because it's very symmetrical and very similar in terms of the sizes of these masses. 
So what you can do is you can favor one side and what I mean is that you can make one side uh, for example bigger, one side smaller or you can add something uh, like bigger mass or a different shape or you can add straight lines to one side or one part and support it somewhere else on the other part or you can make one mass like significantly, significantly bigger than the lower part or the higher part it doesn't matter which one so for example which is to favor the left side at the bottom and really favor it and trying to make all these masses different so we have this kind of proportion in terms of sizes so you see we get bigger mass medium mass in terms of the length and more like a long mass here we try not to repeat shapes too much and we try to make it more contrasting in terms of both shape language and masses so the same applies to the forms inside the fire we don't make it we don't want to make it too repetitive we don't want this to be on the same level, so we don't want these tips to match and we don't want these tips to match each other and we don't want to have the same elements uh, too close. So see this element and this element they are very similar and they are very close and this element and this element make it even more symmetrical because they are directly next to each other and they are very similar in terms of form. So we should try to avoid that. So we can again repeat the contour way less. We can maybe add some particles. Uh, we can play a bit more with the way it is positioned in the shape. So it doesn't have to be directly in the center of the form. It can be very different and that's okay so we can do something like this we can do something more crazy we can make it really different from the outer counter and that is the fine that is totally fine. So the same thing here and the same thing here. Try to not to repeat shapes too much. Uh, you can simplify the first stages and you can stretch it out to really make it obvious that it's being pushed up. And to do that you can extend the holes in the form. Uh, extending the holes means that something is pushing the fire really really fast, really strong, so it's stretching out. Or you can move, like, gather the energy, like the fire condensating uh, in one place before it starts really burning fast. So, Let's look at the animation itself. So in terms of the animation itself, uh, again the shape language is really nice. It has some of that symmetry issues and some of that mass difference issues. Uh, like not having the differences of masses in the animation, in the design. Uh, but in terms of the motion itself, the most important thing that we're kind of lacking here is a nice transition, nice slowdown of the bigger shape because right now it kind of disappears very fast and it's not very clear where it goes. So let's see. So we start like this. We can get more energy going here so that we can easily transition to this frame. Or we can do something like this. 
to add some speed. Again, this shape is not very long uh, and it sort of implies that we have some turbulence here and we can just make it faster by stretching the fire out using this kind of shapes or this kind of shapes to tell that it's moving forward and it's moving quite fast. Again, we can stretch out the tip of the fire to make it seem fast or we can connect it to the form, again, implying that the fire is fast and it's still keeping its form. And then, uh, you see, the big thing here in terms of the motion itself is that first, it starts decelerating and that's nice, but uh, you see, right here, the transition between this form and the next form doesn't work. Right now, it feels like this big form, this shape, goes down to the left. Because there is nothing, so this form is very similar to this form. So visually it looks like this form becomes this form. But there is nothing for this form to get a nice transition from this frame to the next frame. There is no masses at the top that can connect in terms of the motion. So to, to make it work we need something here, we need some mass here so that we can understand what's the motion, how does it transition from this frame to the next frame. If we don't have anything here it feels like it's going down because you see this shape it is going up, up and then we have similar shapes down here so it feels like it's suddenly going down, and that's strange. And again, the second scene is having a nice slowdown for all the shapes. And right here I'd say that you can break up the particle way faster and start raising it using howls a bit faster. Also, one note is that right now the particles are uh, parallel to each other and are going in line with each other, so they're reflecting and repeating the motion. So it would be way more interesting if you add some rotation either to this particle or this part of the particle or to this particle, just to make the motion different and just to break up this parallel line. As for the other parts, again, we lack a bit of that nice slowdown. So you see it goes down, goes down, goes down, goes up, extends, slows down and goes smaller, becomes smaller again, goes up, becomes smaller. But we don't have this nice kind of gradual slowdown or sort of gradual slowdown, so it lacks a bit of that dynamic motion. Again, even with this form, you see it goes and it starts really slow, and then visually it goes like here, because we don't have anything for this mass to connect, it feels like it's going down, so it feels like this shape just stays here at the same spot, and then slowly goes out. And you see, we don't have that, we don't have a nice slowdown, we don't have a nice acceleration at the start, that's why it's not very dynamic. You can also add a bit of that wave motion to the animation, and that will make it work way better. So, I guess that's mostly it. Wish you good luck with your animations, and see you later!